Uh, thank you, Dr. Lee, for the brief introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Han Dongyao. And uh, today I'm going to talk about the techniques to enhance learning based trajectory prediction. So uh, let's start. Uh, traffic congestion uh, emerges uh, for decades. And uh, 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 you know, the shock, uh, the congestions is uh, uh, all, always follow a uh, stop and go patterns and these will uh this will cause uh, tra uh the delay of traffic and the cause series uh, uh, uh fuel consumption uh, problems and the most importantly ri risks uh human uh, lives uh, with the development of the emerging C connected automated vehicle cav technologies it is it is a, it is a, a potential it is potential to improve the traffic performance. Uh, as you can see from these videos, when vehicles approach a signalized intersection, they have to stop at the uh, red lights without CAV management. And with CAV management, for example, uh, let's say uh, trajectory optimization and eco driving. Uh, these vehicles will yield uh, smoother trajectories without full stops. There are four steps in the CAV management. The first step is perception. <coughs> CAV systems, including CAVs and infrastructure, recognize surrounding, uh, surrounding environment using in-vehicle and roadside sensors. For example, cameras, uh, lidars, and radars. And the second step is prediction. Uh, CAV systems will predict fut uh, future trajectories of road users uh, with the historical trajectories. And then the third step is planning. Sorry, a little weird with this box. Uh, the third step is planning. Uh, CAV systems will generate the subject CAV trajectory with the predicted uh, trajectories of uh, the road of the other road users. And the last step is control. Uh, <coughs> CAV will control. Uh, actually, the CAV systems will control the subject CAV's motions. Uh, based on the planned trajectory. Actually, the uh, the trajectory prediction is the key step in the CAV <coughs> management. More generally, more accurate the, the, the trajectory prediction is the uh, better CAV operations performance will be. So in a uh, trajectory prediction, we usually uh, focus on the immediate, uh, immediately preceding vehicle of the CAV. Thus, we only uh, we need to uh, predict the future trajectory of the uh, of it, and uh, based on uh, based on the historical trajectories of the other downstream preceding vehicles. Then I will uh, introduce two techniques. The first one is called physics plus learning. And the second one is called dimensionality reduction. Uh, don't worry about these terms. I will introduce and explain them one by one. Uh, technique one is physics plus learning. <coughs> Uh, researchers uh, have uh, adopted the physics-based models uh, to predict vehicle trajectories for decades. Uh, these kinds of models usually uh, is, are the carpooling models. <clears throat> and they have verified that 
using multiple uh, preceding vehicles will improve the prediction performance. But uh, these physical based carbon models, they are uh, they are they have a low dimension and uh, they have a simple model structure. Thus, we are called uh, not so accurate predictions. Recently, uh, learning based models have been widely used in trajectory prediction. For example, a uh, long short term memory LSTM, convolutional neural network CNN, graph convolutional network GCN. These learning based models, they uh, they have have a good pre uh, they have a good prediction performance, but they are purely data driven methods. So they they don't have actually they don't have a good pre uh, pre interpretab interpretability, and uh, they are lack of, uh, also they lack of uh, the physics in size, and even missing the opportunity to. Uh, further improve the pre, uh, trajectory prediction. Therefore, to leverage the, adv the advantages of the physics and the learning based models, we propose to integrate them. Uh, actually, a uh, shock wave is a fundamental traffic cra characteristic. And in the free flow traffic, shock waves propagate with the traffic flow. Uh, but in the congested traffic, sh shockwaves propagate against traffic flow and follow a stop and go patterns. Incorporating uh, sh shock, the physics of shock waves into the learning based model will, is expected to uh, yield a better prediction performance. Then first we will uh, then first, we calculate the shock wave speed uh, with the LWR model, and then we uh, get the offset trajectories. Uh, actually, in our previous work, we get the offset trajectories based on a, uh, on the on the old newest coupling model. And uh, actually, this coupling model, uh, the, actually these offset trajectories are the uh, a set of segments that transferred from the the historical trajectories, but there are there are some great uh, some errors, uh, great errors in uh, when using this method. So we propose to use the speed related numerous coupling model to generate these offset trajectories. Uh, as you can see, the red dashed line is the new uh, is from the new matter and uh, uh, the black dotted line of curves uh, from the uh, old matter and obviously this new matter is much better than the old matter, uh, the previous matter. Then we integrate the physics, uh, we propose the physics aware learning based PL model to integrate uh, the physics and uh, the learning based model. All the inputs, uh, the inputs include uh, include um, the, the information of own um, vehicles. Uh, for example, the space and the location uh, and positions. Uh, on the one hand, we get the physics of shock waves with a revised physics revised physics based model. And the input uh, the, the input of this kind of of this physics uh, based model uh, include the uh, the information of preceding vehicles from vehicle one to vehicle n minus one. On the other hand, we use a prior learning layers, for example, LSTM to get the pure data driven features with all inputs. Then. In the posterior learning layers, we combine the physics of shock waves and the uh, data driven features. Actually, we uh, in the experiment part, we propose three kinds of, uh, of uh, PL models. The first one is PL with, a, uh, 
with a uh, with neural networks in the posterior learning layer called PALA and uh, the C, uh, PAL with CNN called PALC and uh, PAL with LSTM called PALL. To compare with, uh, with our proposed models, we introduced uh, three, learn three learning based models. The first two models are classical LSTM and CM based models. Uh, actually, they just uh, feed all the inputs directly into the learning based models. And the third one called convolutional LSTM model, CLSTM. Here we, we did a, a little uh, re, a revision. Here uh, the inputs are sequentially feed into the model, and here the structure of the LSTM model. <coughs> the idea of the CLSTM model is to sequentially learn the features of two continuous vehicle, following a basic Kaufman rule that vehicles will uh, follow their preceding vehicle, re preceding vehicles one by one from downstream to upstream. <clears throat> then a set of experiments are con uh, is conducted to test the model performance. Uh, high sim the high sim data set uh, uh, is adopted for training and testing. Then to investigate the <coughs> the the uh, impact of shockwave. We uh, the, actually there are ten vehicles are identified in a couple of in platoon, and uh, uh, to to ensure a, a stable coupling behavior, we set the observation period and prediction period as fifteen seconds. Also, we will uh, we focus we will focus on the congested tra traffic, so the shockwave speed is less than zero. Uh, finally, we get 487 samples with such limited sample size. We uh, the five-fold cross validation is adopted. Here we'll test uh, all these models, include PLA, PLC, PLL, LSTM, CNN. CLSTM and the physics based model. In the first ex uh, experiment, we compare all these models and we found that the physics based model uh, has the worst prediction result. And uh, uh, we found that C uh, LSTM is better than the CNN due to the, uh, due to the, the advantage of, due to its. Uh, advantage to uh, address time series problems. And the CLSTM is a little better than the LSTM. And we think this is probably because the uh, sequential structure that can learn features uh, from two continuous vehicles. And uh, further, we found the PLS uh, models are perform pure learning based and physics based models with an 8.7% improvement in posi position IMSE. Here are some uh, trajectory results uh, of different models. And the left figures shows the uh, trajectories of pure physics and pure learning based models. And the right uh, figures show, uh, plot the trajectories of uh, PL models. And the example one is the formation of stop and go traffic. Example two is the dissipation of stop and go traffic. And obviously, we found that uh, PL models, uh, the, the trajectories of PL models are closer to the actual trajectory. The second experiment is the awareness of shockwave physics. Uh, here, the, the vehicle number varies from 1 to 10, and uh, 
We found that more preceding vehicles include more information of shock waves and thus yet better prediction performance. But no further significant improvement is received when vehicle number exceeds five. This is probably because the shock wave can only uh, propagate in a limited range. For example, if, uh, if the shock wave speed is five meters per second, and uh, the shock wave can only propagate 75 meters in 15 seconds, and uh, assume the space in between two vehicles is 15, second, uh, 15 meters, and then the, the, the number of the vehicles that the uh, uh, shock wave can pass is around five. Then even with a few preceding vehicles, PL models yield significant improvement. Okay, uh, and the third experiment is about the CV connected vehicle market penetration analysis. Here, the uh, market, CV market penetration rate varies from zero to 100%. And we found that uh, bad performance is observed with higher CV market penetration rate. And uh, this is what, what we expected. And uh, we also found PL models are less significant at low CV market penetration rate. This is probably because the uh, the the physics of a shock wave, let's say the physics or uh, physics based model may generate worse uh, trajectory or worse physics to with less information. And this this kind of worse trajectory may uh, make the the performance worse. But overall, the PL models yields three to ten percent benefits. To sum up, first, the uh, hybrid models with the physics of shock waves can further improve the prediction performance. Second, the hybrid model is effective across all CV market penetration rates. It is, uh, it is hi highlighted that we, we actually, we can, this, this is valuable to uh, when, when the V2X communication technology comes and uh, this can help the, uh, help, uh, th this shows uh, CV market country, uh, CV technologies is very important and we should deploy more uh, CV technologies on highways. Uh, actually, you can uh, find more details about this uh, topic in our preprint uh, as listed here. Okay, uh, the second technique is about is called dimensionality reduction. In, in learning based trajectory prediction, the, the curse of dimensionality happens. And this means uh, in the trajectory prediction, you the inputs features, the input uh, are the speed uh, are the uh, speeds and uh, accelerations uh, we in several let's say maybe in several uh, few seconds and this include hundreds or thousands of uh, input features and this high dimension now these high dimensional features will cause a longer training time and and what more it will uh, may it might cause a, a worse prediction performance due to the overfitting problems. And uh, the dimensionality reduction techniques have have been uh, proposed to address these curves, and the reduced uh, dimensionality will re will cause a reduced computational complexity, which will uh, which which actually require lower system configurations and thus reduce the CAV costs.
researchers uh, have uh, embedded deep neural networks, uh, for example, the CLN uh, as, a, as a dimensionality reduction technique for the trajectory prediction, uh, learning based trajectory prediction. But with the black box nature of the uh, deep neural networks, uh, the feature might not be interpretable. And then we propose to two we propose two interpretable techniques. Uh, and the first one is piecewise Taylor series approximate approximation PTA. The second one is piecewise Fourier series approximation PFA. Regarding the piecewise Taylor series approximation, first we will separate a trajectory into several short uh, segments with a time window length, delta PTA. And then we will, we will apply Taylor approximation approximation on them. Here, uh, we will got uh, finally we will got two. Uh, actually, there are two important parameters. One is called maximum power, and uh, uh, another is called called the Taylor coefficients. To estimate the Taylor coefficients. We have a uh, we rewrite the the above equation as a system of linear equations, and then we apply the OLS estimation to get the uh, Taylor coefficients. Uh, normally, uh, the we 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 just need to select a small uh, the small value of the maximum power. For example, one, two, and three. When the uh, time window length is very uh, is small, is short. Uh, regarding the piecewise Fourier series approximation, uh, uh, actually there are the, the same procedure is applied here. The first we will uh, also separate the trajectory into several short segments with a time window length called delta i PFA. And then we'll uh, the difference from the different to the, uh, the PTA method. We apply the Fourier approximation on them, and then the speed can be represented by the uh, for, uh, the maximum cycle number, the Fourier coefficients, and the dominating periods. Then we uh, use the we calculate the Fourier coefficients and dom dominating periods here. Uh, omega is the frequency after the Fourier transform. Next, we integrate the PTA or PFA with the, the LSTM based model. <clears throat> uh, it is highlighted here that we, uh, we not only you, we not only uh, reduce the dimension of the input features to uh, to the uh, Taylor or Fourier coefficients. We also uh, have we also have the uh, a few coefficients in uh, in the output, and this uh, actually this can this is benefit to, for the uh, for the V2X. Communication with just a, a low cost uh, and uh, a low bandwidth. Then uh, a set of experiments is conducted to compare uh, the proposed method with the uh, neural network based model and the LSTM based model. Uh, NGSIM US 101 dataset and the high sim dataset are adopted here. Uh, here we we just focus we will focus on the preceding and the following vehicle pairs. They that only include two vehicles, and uh, uh, we will uh, consider 10 second observation and the 10 second prediction periods. Finally, we will get uh finally we get the the training set validation set and the test set for NGSIM and the HiSIM uh, data sets. 
Here are some default settings. <clears throat> the total time steps in uh, the total time steps in the observation period and uh, the prediction period are set as 100. Uh, actually, it's 10. Uh, that is 10 seconds. And uh, uh, the time window length of the PTA is set as one. Uh, this will help us to extract extract uh, extract more uh, extract more uh, uh, more length, uh, no, more segments. And the maximum power of for uh, maximum power of PTA is set as one. And this will get uh, this will help us to reduce uh, the input features. And uh, the time window length of the PFA is set as 205, and the maximum cycle number of the PTA is set at uh, Z, is set at uh, 10. This will help us to, uh, this can uh, guarantee the fitting uh, performance. <laughs> then, uh, the first experiment, uh, the first first experiment uh, is uh, shows here is uh, the comparison between uh, between all these models. First, we found that a model has a short training time, but was prediction results. This is because of the simpler structure of the neural network, and we also found. LSTM has the best prediction results, but a much longer training time. This is because LSTM it, it has the advantage to address time series pro problems, but it has a much complex, more comp complex structure. And then uh, compared with the LSTM model, PTA and PFA largely reduce training time with marginal loss of prediction performance. Actually here, uh, the input features are reduced to 60, 60 uh, with the PTA and, uh, uh, and the features are reduced to 132 with the PFA. This is the reason why it can uh, largely reduce the training time. Then here are some uh, trajectory results of these uh, models. The left side shows the predicted trajectories, and uh, the right fig figures show the corresponding arrows be between the predicted trajectory and the uh, actual tra trajectory, the actual trajectory. And we found that the PTA and PFA models have a similar uh, results have a similar results as the LSTM model, which is much better than the neural network model. <clears throat> then we uh, did uh, some sensitivity analysis for the uh, for the for the PTA and PFA model uh, models. Uh, regarding the PTA parameters, the uh, Delta I PTA is the time window length, and the M is the maximum mm, maximum power. <clears throat> First, we found that uh, the prediction performance, uh, let's say the MS position MSE and the uh, uh, speed MC becomes higher. That's, that means the performance becomes worse. Uh, becomes worse when the uh, that IPTA increases. And uh, <clears throat> we also found when the when the uh, data I is uh, is at a small level and uh, the uh, prediction performance becomes worse with, with the uh, when when the uh, M increases. Also uh, the when the data uh, data i is at a, a great level, the actually the I, IMC, uh, IMC, the perform prediction performance become better with the m increases. This is because uh, because the 
uh, <clears throat> because the uh, at this scenario, at this uh, scenario, the fitting uh, MS, the fitting performance becomes better. But at the uh, previous scenario, the uh, when the data uh, data IPTA uh, at a small level and the M uh, at a uh, is greater, actually there are too many uh, features that might cause an overfitting problem. Oh, uh, actually, uh, the same results, uh, actually, uh, not the same, the similar, the sim similar results happens in the uh, PFA model. So we, uh, I, I didn't put the results here, but we can, uh, but the, we, you can imagine that actually they are have the same results. Uh, for the PFA model, there are also two parameters. Uh, per parameters. The first one is that I PFA is the uh, time window length of the PFA, and the uh, and the uh, uh, Z Z is the maximum cycle, uh, now the maximum number of the cycles, and uh, they show the same results here. Uh, the predict performance will become worse when the uh, that I P PFA increases, and the uh, uh, and the prediction performance will become uh, become worse when the Z when Z increases. Then we uh, investigate the impacts of observation and the prediction periods. First, we uh, found that a longer observation period yields better prediction performance. But when the uh, observation period exceeds 10 seconds, the performance, the, 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 there is no significant improvement. This is because uh, those learning based models actually they have uh, uh, limited memories and they, they cannot uh, store, store all memory or uh, too many uh, data, too many uh, historical features. So that's the reason uh, the the, the that's the reason the prediction performance because uh, is not that uh, the improvement is not that significant, and uh, uh, we also found the prediction performance is worse as the prediction pre period increases. Uh, this actually uh, uh, this is uh, obvious because we cannot lo look too far ahead. Then we inspect the impacts of data noise. Uh, here we consider the white Gaussian noise on positions with mean zero and the variance sigma square. And uh, uh, in these figures, the curves, these curves denote the uh, MS position MSEs of the different models. And the these bars, uh, denote the differences between uh, PTA or PFA and the uh, uh, LSTM based model. We found that PTA and PFA are robust against relatively large noise. This is because uh, PTA and PFA can extract the trend of data, and that trend is not uh, is not that uh, will not be affected by no, no, it's not that much affected by the uh, data noise. And uh, uh, <clears throat> we also found that uh, PTA actually has a little better performance than the PFA. This is my because the uh, the Fourier coefficients are a, li a little bit um, more affected by the uh, uh, by the data noise than the Taylor coefficients. To sum up, uh, the first thing is PTA and the PFA can improve computational efficiency with marginal loss of prediction performance. And when 
The second one is when data noise is prevailing, learning models with PTA and PFA outperform the classical learning-based model. Uh, actually, you may find more details about this paper in the in our preprint as listed here. And there are several di future directions. The first one is <clears throat> here after after we evaluate the uh, performance of the of these enhancement techniques, it is valuable to investigate the analytical properties of these enhancement techniques. Also, uh, we, we, we only uh, focus on the uh, longitudinal motions uh, in our work. And it is interesting, actually in the important to add lane change that uh, lateral motion, uh, lateral impacts into trajectory prediction models. And further, uh, we can combine learning-based trajectory prediction with trajectory planning. Uh, last but not least, uh, we have proposed uh, several uh, physics-based models and learning-based models in either uh, trajectory prediction or planning, but what the impacts and what's the performance when we, uh, when we uh, wh and what's the advantage of using these models? Actually, we can compare the physics-based models and the learning-based models in both trajectory prediction and planning. And thank you. Uh, I think this is the end of my presentation, and uh, I'm happy to answer your questions. And uh, thank you. <laughs> And th thank you. So since this session is hybrid, maybe we can go in turns. Let's start with the uh, like. Uh, see uh, whether we could see the. Uh, closer. Here. Let me see. Uh, whether I could. Uh, OK. Uh, yeah, let me, uh, maybe we can start from the online audience. Do you have any questions? If you have any questions, uh, we please uh, unmute yourself and uh, speak out, or you may just leave a message. Uh, okay. Uh, well, well, please feel free to leave a message about your uh, questions. Maybe we can turn this to the classroom. Does anyone have any question? Uh, sure. L let me give you the microphone so that folks in this. Uh, Online would talk here. Okay, so greens, everyone. So, uh, well, I do like the research that goes into this, and even though I am a futurist and into futurism, uh, I don't think autonomous vehicles are best for the future. I think the future belongs to manually driven vehicles. In Star Wars, vehicles were manually, the X Wings were manually driven with the aid of. Of course, asteroids, of course, which is a possibility nowadays. Uh, but we need to limit advancements in technology in order we should focus instead on a future based on advances in, in structural engineering. Thank you. Thank you for the comment. Thank you. Yeah, this is a very good comment. And uh, uh, actually, we don't know in the future uh, the AV or human driven vehicles will be which one is better. But here we, we try to use some these uh, advanced technologies to to improve our traffic systems. And uh, uh, what the uh, for example. We have ACC uh, adaptive cruise control, and we have uh, land keeping uh, functions. This will help us to uh, 
make the the vehicle more uh, safety, more safe. And uh, uh, and yeah, this is what I want to say is that we we try we are not trying to uh, replace human driven vehicles with AVs. We try to what we want to do is to use these technologies to help people and to make the tra uh, traffic system better, to make the maybe uh, have a the the environment better, have a better, uh, a more efficient uh, world. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, yeah, the, the beauty of this platform is that everyone feels free to express your opinions. Uh, yeah, and I think, uh, you know, I I don't necessarily agree with what, what you guys said uh, 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 completely, but I think it makes sense to a certain degree that, uh, you know, maybe autonomous vehicles will not dominate in the future. But I guess, uh, you know, you like it or not, uh, uh, at least automated vehicles are happening. Now, many of you are already driving low level automated vehicles with adaptive cruise control. You know, that that's not something we can avoid right now. But high level automation, you know, that's something um, and that you know, that's something I expect to come, but uh, you know, there are uncertainties and we can debate. Uh, but but it's good that we, you know, express our views uh, in, in, for the future technologies. So, so next, uh, let me turn to the um, screen uh, from uh, Hui Ching Liu. Liu uh, and uh, she says, it seems that time step has a great impact on the estimation, um, maybe uh, Handel, you can comment on it. I think maybe you are talking about the uh, time window length uh, of these uh, matter, PTA or PFA. Actually, it is. And uh, uh, for example, for the PTA mo uh, model for the Taylor uh, series approximation, uh, usually when when we consider a small uh, time window length. The arrows will become small, smaller. So, uh, and it, and we also did some uh, sensitivity analysis, analysis for these uh, parameters. And uh, uh, I think uh, we should be careful when we choose different uh, parameters. Uh, okay, and uh, the best uh, performance maybe choose some small values. But if we want to have a, a better computation you know, efficiency, we can uh, select, uh, we can change, regulate it a little bit. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, any questions from, from the uh, online audience and in class audience? All right, I, I like to, you know, just to comment a bit on the work, you know, it, it's uh, actually quite fresh and some exploratory work. And I, I think some of these are touching the learning and, uh, uh, you know, CAV control. Um, so, it, you know, it, uh, it really, um, it's not uh, uh, some traditional civil engineering uh, or transportation engineering topic or planning topic we're looking at, but uh, I guess it's going to be helpful to expose this kind of new methods and new uh, explorations. You know, th this is uh, like the, just a research topic, and we we do it out of our curiosity of uh, uh, the research. But uh, those kind of methodologies have been already widely in, applied in. Uh, um, in engineering practice and maybe uh, you know next uh, as far as I my interactions with the uh, uh, professionals especially in uh, in transportation engineering fields um, there is increasing need for data analytics using advanced uh, uh, tools and uh, methods like artificial intelligence learn machine learning you know it, it, it'll be good for you guys to learn it if you don't have further question, you know, I, I think we can um, uh, conclude this uh, presentation. Um, and I want to allude uh, to the next seminar by uh, uh, Mr. AC Roberts. He's uh, currently a traffic engineering 
uh, traffic engineer at uh, WGI, and uh, and uh, uh, and I and I think he's going to talk some really cool topics on contact computing or related. So we um, very much uh, look forward to that. And with this, let's thank uh, doc, uh, Dr. Handong Yao again, and uh, hope you have a nice uh, weekend. All right, the session adjourns. Thank you.